So you returned or you are new. Might both be the case, but in any case, I have some good stuff for you. Well, at least if you're into Artifact. Today, we're gonna not talk about this complicated drafting and how to build your deck. Oh, nah, 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 nah. I got some simple tips and tricks for you to increase your win rate and let you earn more packs. Yeah. I will present you free in-game tips to increase your win rate and I hope you're gonna enjoy the following video. Have a good time guys and let's get started. Number one, killing the splash hero. So you might play draft and you might see this itchy little collar which the opponent has included into his deck. So this one blue hero, the one black hero, maybe the one green hero. Hmm. Could all be the case So, In any case, killing this one hero can be very valuable. Very often people have a reason <laughs> they include a blue hero in their deck. Because they have a very strong blue card tree. Otherwise they probably not include a blue hero. So very valuable is killing that one hero. And I have a jewel for you guys. This is gonna show you why it's so pretty to kill the splash hero. So what I have here is a blue... I have much respect for the ability. A blue-green black deck and I splashed in a blue hero. So I'm playing against our friend here and then he has a chance to kill exactly one of my heroes. They never saw it coming. He chooses wrong though and he gets the, the hammer the hammer the hammer well what happened here you might ask yourself so i have this little friendly guy called the skyrath mage bringing a card with him called mystic flare and i had two black heroes on my side of the board and he was thinking to himself i have to kill one of them because it deals a lot of tower damage. Ah. No, no. The right decision very often is in these cases to kill the one specific color. It takes away a lot of options from your opponent. And if you use that little tip, that will help you a lot, guys. Tip number two, guys. Your hero deployment. That is one of the most important things because every game you will have this hero deployment and it's very important to understand it. What do I mean with that? I maybe show you a little bit of a in-game deployment here and maybe we call this section find the mistake. And what I mean by that is what hero do you actually want to have early on? Maybe this helps you understand the section a little bit better or this tip. So we have heroes which have passive abilities, such as Enchantress granting regeneration to herself and the neighbors every single turn. So what will help you is understanding as the sooner you have these passive abilities online, the better for you. So you never want to have Enchantress as a second deploy or third deploy, because it makes her much worse as a hero. What is the counterpart here though? The active ability. So we have for example here a sniper deployed early. 5-6. Terrible stats but therefore he gets an ability. The headshot. Pa -pa -pam. Well this headshot is active every 3 turns. So what is the best advice? Well you want to have him late on, later on. So what can this little tip show you? First of all. You want to have passive abilities early on and active abilities later on. And there are some hero passives which maybe you want to have control about. What am I talking about? Good example, Solar Khan deals 4 damage when attacking a tower. You maybe want to have her as a second deploy because that will give you much more control where she spawns and you can put her in a lane where she actually hits the tower. Another good example. Kana. Kana's passive ability brings every creep in the game to her lane. Well, if you end up deploying Kana early on, well, and she spawns on the right lane, she will probably stay alive a little bit. 
because she has 212. <laughs> so every creep will be on the right lane and well as I told you already the right lane is not the best lane to play in the beginning so maybe you want to deploy her second although her passive is sometimes useful so you have more control over that. So what can you take out of this lesson for your drafting process? First of all Look out how many early game heroes you have and how many active abilities or late game heroes you have. That is very, very important. I can't stress it out much or much more. Yeah, whatever. You get the point, guys. If you already have three good um, passive ability heroes, let's say you have three trends and you get a fourth one and you think he's so awesome. Well, if you deploy him later, he gets worse. So ideally you have two active ability heroes and three early game heroes. It can also just be a very big smash in the early game, like X. He doesn't have the best passive, but he's hitting hard. So either you want to have early on great stats or great ability. And later on you want to have heroes with... They most of the time have weaker stats, but a good active ability. Sniper is a very, very good example for that. Tip number three. And that's a pretty one. That's probably one of the most abused one from my side and I think also the most helpful one. Abuse your opponent's heroes. How do I mean that? Well, people tend to do one thing. I'll show you. Aha! Uh -huh. Three heroes in a lane. Probably even the right lane. I catch that from my stream. They're having a really good party there. But is it a damage party? No. Hmm. Is it a removal party? No, because I can't remove anything. So we're just having a campfire there? No, that's what I was asking myself at least. I can tell you one thing. Having three heroes in an empty lane, that can spell disaster. Because my five heroes, either they are dead, okay, that could also be. Or they are having a party at his other two lanes. And I can tell you one thing, there are not going to be more than two heroes defending these lanes. Does that spell desire for him? Not always. But I can tell you one thing, I probably can have more versatility in cards and options in these two lanes than he has in this lane. Yeah, Especially because he has committed a color like blue here, which is very reactive. And red which actually wants to remove the smaller heroes from your opponents uh, by having a lot of power. He even has an improvement in this lane, which probably is also the reason why he's pretty much ahead in this lane. But the problem is, well, if you have this improvement there, do you also need three heroes? Rarely, yeah? So what do I want to tell you there? Watch your hero deployment. That is so, so important. I can just give you a little bit of a sample how you should play it. Most of the time you want to have two heroes in the first lane, two heroes in the second lane and one in the last lane. Because the first two lanes are obviously more important because the combat phase is earlier. So you can crush the tower earlier. Really guys, that is a very, 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 very important tip deploy your heroes right distribute your cards right if you die with a lot of cards in your hand that most of the time means you either had too much card on your deck which could happen or you just didn't distribute your heroes the right way sometimes you get unlucky but hey no i'm talking about that okay um i hope i could help you with this video i know it's a little bit shorter <coughs> And I'm going to see you next time. Have a good one, guys. Let me know what you would like to see in my videos. And ahoy.